What is up everyone, how's it going? Hope you're keeping well and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. Game Week 10 was a lovely game week for my own team and the team is nicely set up now for Game Week 11 so let's hope these green hours keep coming away and we keep climbing the ranks. I keep having to say this but 70% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed to the channel so if you are watching this and you're not subscribed please do hit that subscribe button below. We're currently on the road to 5k subs, I'm hoping to get there before Christmas so if you are watching this and you're not subscribed please do hit that subscribe button. You got a sneak peek of it there at the start of the video, but stick around towards the end of the video where I'll be going to a pitch in County Roscommon for what will probably be the best captaincy video I filmed this season. In this video, I'll be showing you how I fell out in Game Week 10 and we'll also be looking at my transfer plans and team selection ahead of Game Week 11. Let's get into the video. So looking at the Game Week 10 review, I scored 79 points of the Game Week, which was a lovely return for the team. Young Min Sun kicked off proceedings on Friday night with a goal and a 10 point haul for a lovely start to the Game Week. Unfortunately, I transferred out Madison and he came away in assist on Friday night, but at least my transfer in Osaka managed to get an assist, albeit a jammy one, but at least I'll break even on that. I do prefer Saka also for the next couple of games, especially Burnley in game week 12, so I do think the star boy will score more over the next few game weeks. Apart from Saka's jammy assist on Saturday, it was a boring enough day of FPL for my team, especially with Burn coming away with a zero point return after he conceded twice and picked up a yellow. Sunday was where the returns were at. So kicking off with the Sunday's fixtures, I had two West Ham players involved in the early kickoff, but unfortunately it was some disappointing returns as Ariola lost his clean sheet and Ward Prowse drew a blank. That Ariola clean sheet wipeout now means West Ham have only kept one clean sheet in the opening 10 fixtures and with Brentford away next in game week 11, I'm not too hopeful of a clean sheet here. That being said, they do have a great run of fixtures up until game week 17, so I'll be hopeful of a few West Ham clean sheets over those run of fixtures. I was all set in getting rid of Ward Prowse before the deadline, but with the news that Udugi was set to miss the Crystal Palace game, I had to prioritise getting rid of him, but at least I got in Simicast for his clean sheet and a six point return. That being said, it was a very frustrating watch, watching Ward Prowse sit in that CDM role for West Ham, so I'll more than likely be looking to get rid of him this week. My captain Mo Salah assisted the assister on both occasions for Liverpool's opening two goals, so it was a nervous watch, hoping for a Salah return, but thankfully late on in the second half, Matt Turner assisted Mo Salah when he made a massive error and Salah had an empty net. That goal meant he came away with a 16 point return from the armband and I was content with that as long as my captain returned. It also means Salah's only blanked once all season and that game where he blanked was against Spurs where he should have had the assist for the wrongly disallowed Diaz goal. Moving on to my triple villa against Luton, my fate in the Abbey finally was rewarded where he came away with a goal and assist and a massive, very much needed 13 point haul. After two blanks in a row, Matty Cash finally came away with a return albeit a lucky one after he got his clean sheet when he was substituted early before Luton scored their goal. After some great form over the last couple of game weeks, Ollie Watkins finally drew a blank, which now means he's blanked twice this season, but he should have scored from a Matty Cash cross, which meant I missed out on some big points. Erling Haaland finished off the game week in style with a massive 16 pointer, with two goals and an assist, and where he clearly displayed, he's back in form. He's now got Bournemouth at home in game week 11, and best of luck to the FPL managers who don't own him, and they'll definitely need a massive sofa to hide behind on Saturday. All that mattered then, was I got another green arrow, and I'm now sitting at 730k overall. Let's hope this green arrow streak continues, and hopefully we'll be inside the top 100k by Christmas. That's the game week 10 review out of the way, let's see how we're shaping up ahead of game week 11. Before we get into this week's team selection, let's have a look at the clean sheet odds for Game Week 11 and there's no surprise to see Man City top the charts with their home fixture against Bournemouth. It's also good viewing for my own team, with Liverpool, Aston Villa and Crystal Palace all ranking in the top 5 for the chance of a clean sheet, so hopefully I'll see some consistent returns over the Game Week. This week sees the start of some tough upcoming fixtures for Newcastle, starting off with Arsenal in Game Week 11, so there's no surprise to see Trippier is being sold by a lot of FPL managers this week. Be warned though, he does have Bournemouth then in game week 12, but if you are looking to free up some funds to get Hallam back into your team, I'd probably recommend on getting rid of him. Looking at predicted points for game week 11, Erling Hallam and Mo Salah clearly lead the line with Man City at home to Bournemouth and Liverpool away to Luton. Two favourable fixtures for both of these players, so I've got a bit of a decision to make around the captaincy, but I'll chat about that later on in the video. The top 10 is clearly saturated by Man City and Liverpool players with their favourable fixtures, but it's also good to see Son makes the top 10 with his home fixture against Chelsea on Monday night. Big news from the weekend was the fact Neto picked up a hamstring injury, so he's set to be sidelined for the next couple of weeks, so if you are a Neto owner and you're in the need of a replacement, I've outlined on screen the midfielders that are priced less than 7 million with the best non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes. 
After two double digit hauls in his last two games, there's no surprise to see Brian Mbemo top the charts for this. But keep in mind, he faces West Ham this weekend, followed by Arsenal in game week 12, and then Liverpool in game week 13, so his fixtures aren't the best, and I probably advise looking elsewhere. He's a great fixture then, against Luton in game week 14, so if you can, I'd wait until game week 14, and get Mbemo into your team then. But game week 14 is no good to Neto owners, you need a replacement now, so I'd probably look towards Matoma of Brighton, as Brighton have a great run of fixtures over the next couple of game weeks, and Matoma's had a full week's worth of rest, so I'm expecting to do well against the tired Everton team who have played last night in the Cup. So looking at my team for game week 11, Ariola retains a spot in goals, with my subkeeper Turner facing a difficult task at home to Villa, but that being said, Ariola also faced a difficult task away to Brentford, so I'm not expecting too much from my two goalkeepers. That being said, I wouldn't mind a few save points from Ariola, and I'll be happy enough if he comes away with a three-point return. So moving on to my defence, there's one change from my game week 10 team, with Dan Byrne up against Arsenal, so he comes out of the team, and Gway, he comes into the starting eleven with him away to Burnley. My three-man defence is in good shape for the weekend, with Liverpool, Villa and Palace all facing teams in the bottom five of the Premier League, so hopefully I'll see some clean sheets here. Simi Cass did play 90 minutes in the Cup last night, but I'm expecting him still to retain his position on Sunday, so hopefully I'll see some returns from him. I'll be hoping Matty Cash can make it two clean sheets in two when he's away to Forest at the weekend, and hopefully Watkins and the Abbey can convert some of his crosses. With four clean sheets already for Palace this season, I'll be hoping Gwe he can make it number five away to Burnley, and with some great fixtures upcoming for Crystal Palace over the next couple of games, he could be a regular in my team over the next couple of gamings. That's the defence sorted, let's move on to the midfield. Moving on to the midfield, the only real main concern is Ward Prowse is still in the team and when I'm playing in that CDM role, I think I need to get rid. However, Paquette is set to be suspended for game week 11 after picking up his fifth yellow card, so that can mean Ward Prowse could move back into that number 10 role and potentially be on penalties. We'll chat about my transfer plans later on in the video, but for now, Ward Prowse stays in the team. Apart from the question marks around Ward Prowse, my midfield is looking pretty strong, especially with Mo Salah away to Luton on Sunday, and with only one blank all season, I'll be expecting another return from him. The Abbey is only owned by 14% of FPL managers, so after his big haul against Luton last weekend, I'll be hoping he can kick on from this and get another haul away to Forest. Son and Saka complete my five-man midfield, with Spurs and Arsenal probably having the most difficult fixtures of my team this weekend, with Spurs at home to Chelsea and Arsenal away to Newcastle. Son had a full week's worth of rest, with Spurs already knocked out of the cup, and Saka only played 30 minutes last night when West Ham knocked them out. Even with their difficult fixtures, I'm still expecting some returns from this duo, so hopefully we see them over the weekend. That's the midfield sorted for now, let's move on to the two strikers. Moving up front, there's no surprise to see Erling Haaland and Ollie Watkins complete my starting 11, and in the form they're both in at the moment, they'll be hard shifted out of the team. I'm expecting Ollie Watkins to bounce back from his blank against Luton last weekend, so I'll be expecting a return from him away to Forest. Erling Haaland is back to his best after his haul against Man United last weekend, and with the home fixture against Bournemouth, I'll be hoping for a massive haul to punish the people who don't own him. That's a starting 11 sorted for Game Week 11. Let's move on and see my transfer plans. So looking at my transfer plans for Game Week 11, I'm more than likely looking to shift out James Ward-Prowse as he's playing in a deep role for West Ham and bring in Matoma with Brighton facing Everton, Sheffield and Nottingham Forest over the next three games, so I want to attack these fixtures. Ward-Prowse has already dropped in price this week, so I'm lucky enough to have the exact funds available to move from Matoma on a free transfer. With those three favourable fixtures upcoming for Brighton, I think it's sensible to move from Matoma, so hopefully I see some returns from him. That's my Game Week 11 transfer plans out of the way. Let's head to the pitch and counter Scammon to see who will be captaining this week. Right then, Game Week 11, we've got uh, Man City at home to Bournemouth and Liverpool away to Luton on, uh, on Sunday. Bit of a dilemma to make, bit of a decision to make around the captaincy. Uh, Salah is the man in form at the moment, but Haaland does have that better fixture at home for City. We're back at Boyle GA County Roscommon. Um, first off, a bit of bit of a flu at the moment, and uh, had a bit of a disaster at the weekend. I forgot my four or five footballs in Gola, so I had to buy two new footballs, 30 quid each, 60 quid. These captaincy videos are getting a bit, a bit expensive, so if you haven't liked the video yet, if you haven't subscribed, now is the time to do so. Please, please do hit that subscribe button and give the video a like. Right, we're about 25, 30 yards out at the moment. Gonna go for a free kick. We've got no keeper in goal, so it has to be pretty much perfect. Um, otherwise, it's gonna look a bit crap. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. And let's see how we get on. Cut that.
Hallam for the air, man. Yeah, that's probably going to be the best captaincy video I'm going to film all season. So if you are still watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button below in return for that top in shot. Hallam gets the captaincy at home to Bournemouth, where I'll be hoping for a big haul from the big man and he can punish those that don't have him in their teams. If you've made it to the end of this video, please do give it a like, drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As I said earlier, I'm on the road to 5k subs, I'm trying to hit it by Christmas, so if you are still watching this video and you're not subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button below. Let's hit a like goal of 60 likes on this video, so if you haven't liked it yet, now's the time to do so. I'll see you all on Saturday morning for a deadline stream, where I'll be locking in my Gamic 11 team ahead of the deadline. There you have it, there's my Gamic 11 team, best of luck for the Gamic, I'll see you in the next video.